Hello internet, so this week I'm going to do a kind of twofold blog, so I've got something that I can upload on Sunday, but then I've got something I'm going to upload probably on Tuesday for my normal full length blog. So this is part one, and it's about my chemical romance. It strikes me from being on Twitter over the last week that a lot of people still aren't over the fact that they've split up, and I wanted to sort of throw in my opinion on the matter. I've been a My Chemical Romance fan for far longer than I probably want to admit. Um, because it makes me feel old. That's it. I've loved them ever since their second album, actually, Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge. Um, perhaps I was a little bit slow off the mark for some people. I don't know. But anyway, I discovered them because I'm a massive Green Day fan as well. And there was one particular copy of Enemy where Billy Joe Armstrong was asked to pick songs for their free CD. And he chose a couple of My Chemical Romance songs from the album Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge because they were taking MCR out on tour with them at the time. So I think it was Give Em Hell Kid was one of the songs that was chosen. And I listened to this one song over and over and over again. I couldn't get it out of my head. So I bought the album and absolutely fell in love with it. And I mean, I mean, really, really fell in love with it just spoke to me in a way that nothing else had really done so before and I I fell in love with rock music all over again and it gave me this sense of belonging there seemed to be this sort of family element around the fans and I couldn't wait for the opportunity to see them live unfortunately for me I had to wait until download 2007 now if anyone knows their download history they'll know that they headlined on the Friday night Friday the 8th of June and they got a bit of a bottling actually which was a shame because by this point the Black Parade had come out and they'd had number one single it was the number one for two weeks welcome to the Black Parade and they seemed to have the world at their feet and I absolutely loved them and it was one of the reasons that I really wanted to go to download was just to see MCR I'll be honest though I was stood right at the front right down the front for the entire set and it didn't seem to be as bad as some of the reports said I didn't notice so much of it I did get covered in chilli sauce at one point that was a bit strange but it wasn't actually aimed at them that was just somebody messing about so I really don't know where the reports came from it didn't seem as bad from where I was stood as as like Rang made out but still that was my one and only opportunity to see them live and I'll show you a rather embarrassing link to a very short video I took of Sing um, I'll put it down at the bottom and I'll put a little link thing up at the end. But Mike and McCrum has been the world to me. Like many of you, you'll say that they saved your life. Yeah, mine too, um, on several occasions. When I got into them, I was actually at university and I still didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I'll be honest. Do any of us ever really know what we want to do? And I really felt that this music reached out to me and... I also have this fear, if any of you know me that well, you'll know that I have a fear of dying, and it kind of helped me to come to terms a little bit with that feeling that I had, that sort of fear that I had. And I really would say that they saved my life, on several occasions, without going into details. So when I heard the news last week that my chemical romance had split up, admittedly I was devastated, just like everybody else. But as a long-term fan, I will say that their last album wasn't exactly their best album. I still maintain Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge was the best piece of work they've ever produced. I mean, that's just my opinion. Subjective. Shoot me. I don't care. But a part of me is torn apart by the fact that they've split up, because they were a big part of my life for the last, well, eight or nine years. But another part of me sees that Actually, going out now, while they're still on top, is probably the best thing to do. If it's not working, why should they be made to carry on? Just because a handful of fans think that, you know, everything's going to end. It's not. Life carries on. I've been through so many bands breaking up. And sometimes they get back together. Look at Blink-182. They've split up twice, they've got back together twice. So, you can never say never. Maybe they'll all want to work together in the future. Look at Fall Out Boy. They went on an indefinite hiatus and they're back. So, you can't say that My Chemical Romance are never going to be back together, because they might. We'll just have to wait and see. But in the meantime, 
What you've got to remember is the music lives on through you. Every time you play one of their records, every time you sit there and sing along however well or however badly to whatever your favourite Michael Michael Romance song is, it lives on. All the memories you have every time you've seen them live, every time that you've bought a piece of merch and worn it to a special occasion or something, every memory, every song lives on through you. So my chemical romance don't die just because the band split up. They're immortal. They were immortal the moment they put their first song down on a record track. So what I'm saying is, don't be sad at this time. It's an opportunity for change for them all. And it's exciting. And it's time to move on. And perhaps you'll find a new favourite band. But you don't have to. They can still be your favourite band just because they aren't together anymore. So what I'm saying is enjoy the music, because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. I'll admit, I've moved on a little bit over the last couple of years. Of course I have. My chemical romance still mean the world to me, of course. But as most of you well know by now, my two favourite bands in the world are The Deadly Waiting and Fearless Vampire Killers. And you may be able to draw some similarities, some people have, between MCR and FVK, but I see them as two distinctly different things. And they both have a place in my heart. The music will always live on. So, yeah. Just enjoy the music. That's all it ever was in the first place. If a band means that much to you, that it means that you want to do something... I've heard, this is the last thing I want to say, actually. I've seen some people on Twitter and Tumblr saying that their life is coming to an end and that they don't have anything to live for now that MCR are split up. That is absolutely ridiculous. You do. Of course you do. Do you think that they would want you to end your life just because the band splits up. No, don't be so daft. Bands split up, relationships end, life comes to an end, everything comes to an end eventually, nothing is forever. But you can't go around saying that you're going to do something stupid just because your favourite band is split up. That's absolutely ridiculous and is not what they would want for you anyway. You have to carry on living. Remember the lyric? I'm not afraid to keep on living, I'm not afraid to walk this world alone. Well, do that. Listen to the music, enjoy it, they can still be your favourite band. But don't do anything stupid. That's not what they would want. I, for one, see it as a perfect opportunity for change and for growth. For them, for myself, for all of the fans out there. It's a great opportunity. Just see it. As one door closes, another opens. MCR don't die. MCR live forever. Bye. Mama, we all go to hell Mama, we all go to hell